Hello, Stargazer. Welcome back to Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird speaking with you live on October 24th. We in the Northern Hemisphere sometimes call this star, Fomalo, by the nickname Autumn Star. And we also call Fomalo the loneliest star. But in 2025, Fomalo isn't so lonely. The bright planet Saturn is near it in the sky. Stay with us and I'll give you a foolproof way to recognize Saturn and also point you to Fomalo, the loneliest star. Not so lonely in 2025 with Saturn for company. Plus, I'll tell you about Fomalo's intriguing debris disk and disappearing exoplanet. Okay, so here's how to identify Fomalo from a northern hemisphere location in October or November. Look for this southern star toward the south in early evening. Just don't wait too late because as night deepens, a whole bunch of bright stars, what we consider the bright winter stars will ascend over your eastern horizon. In most years, in early evening in the northern autumn, you'll see Fomalo, the loneliest star, as a bright white solitary star, maybe with a bluish tinge. No other bright stars will be near it, and it'll be twinkling as all stars do. And by the way, we've had some questions about seeing things from our friends in the Southern Hemisphere. And if that's you, face north, not south, north to look for Fomalo and look above your head. Look above the path that the sun travels across your sky. That's the green line that you see on this chart and many Earth sky charts. From the Southern Hemisphere, Fomalo won't be so low in the sky it'll be closer to overhead. And no matter where you are in 2025, Fomalo won't be solitary. You'll find another bright object. This one will be traveling along the path that the sun travels in daytime. Again, the green line across our chart. This is golden Saturn, nearly the same brightness as Fomalo now. Uh, and Saturn shines steadily with a golden light. Fomalo makes a relatively low arc across the sky, as seen from this hemisphere, and Saturn makes a slightly higher arc as night passes. And no matter where you are, the nights around October 31st are a great time to look for Saturn and Fomalo. Around that date, this planet and star will be the two brightest objects near the moon. If you could see Saturn through a telescope now, you'd find its rings nearly edgewise with respect to Earth. They were most edgewise uh, last March, and since then, from our perspective, the rings have been opening up again. This image is from our community member, Guido Santacana in Puerto Rico. He captured it on September 27th. Thank you, Guido. And look closely at this beautiful photo by our friend Brian Martin of Riverside, California. You're seeing a shadow transit of a moon of Saturn. In this case, the largest moon, Titan. Saturn takes about 30 years to orbit our sun once, and we see the rings edgewise and the shadow transits of Saturn's largest moons twice in that time. So it's about a 15-year cycle. The final shadow transit of Saturn's moon Titan for this cycle happened on the night of October 5-6. So the next opportunity to observe a full shadow transit of Titan across Saturn won't happen until the year 2040. Meanwhile, Fomalo is the 18th brightest star in our night sky. And that might not sound super impressive, but you can come to know this star and love it. You'll notice it every year around this time. Fomalo is part of the faint constellation Pisces Astrinus, the southern fish. 
in a dark sky, you'll find Fomalo marking the open mouth of the fish. And here's an 1822 illustration of Aquarius, which is the constellation above the southern fish, as we stand facing southward on October and November evenings. In this illustration, you can see water from the water jar of Aquarius going into the mouth of the southern fish. And if it's dark where you are, you can see a zigzag line of stars extending from the constellation Aquarius in the night sky down to the star Fomalo. And I love thinking about how this starry zigzag inspired the idea of water in the minds of the early constellation namers. Uh, it's why Aquarius was named the water carrier. The star Fomalo is only 25 light years away, so that's relatively nearby. It's a hot, young star, about 400 million years old, in contrast to the four and a half billion years for our middle-aged sun. Fomalo has almost twice the mass of our sun, and it radiates about 16 times our sun's energy. It has an intriguing, dusty debris disk around it. And does it have planets? It did for a while, but then its planet disappeared. That story coming up, but first, the debris disk. It was first discovered in 1983 and revealed in detail by the ALMA telescope in Chile and the Hubble and Webb Space Telescopes. The debris disk is now known to have a broad, cold outer belt, similar to our solar system's Kuiper belt. And it has inner nested belts and gaps whose sharp edges and offsets suggest they're being shaped by unseen planets. In 2008, astronomers said that Hubble images taken in 2004, 2006, and 2008 showed a faint moving dot near Fomalo. This object was hailed as a planet and labeled Fomalo B. It was thought to be located just a few astronomical units. That's just a few Earth-Sun units from the star. So it was a similar distance from Fomalo as our Earth is to our Sun. So for a time, Fomalo B was said to be the first exoplanet seen in visible light. But later, the object began to fade from view, and it eventually vanished. And that led many astronomers to speculate that it wasn't a planet after all, but instead maybe a dust cloud, possibly from a collision of icy bodies in Fomalo's debris disk. So what was originally thought to be a planet and labeled Fomalo B probably isn't a planet, but indirect evidence strongly suggests that planets must be there. They appear to be sculpting Fomalo's debris disk. So astronomers wonder, when will they find a planet for this star? Only time will tell. Good luck seeing Fomalo and Saturn in your night sky. And if you appreciate stories like these about stars and planets, please subscribe, like, and share. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky.